Hello and good morning. So for today's class for mobile technology, we will discuss about the concept of platform proliferation and mobile device fragmentation. Although these two concepts are similar and to the uninitiated, they may seem uh, interchangeably, but they are actually two different uh, concepts that you need to understand before you begin developing mobile application. So we will discuss in depth uh, what is the differences between platform proliferation and mobile device fragmentation. So these are two different concepts and challenges that need to be overcome by the mobile device developer and it will come into play whether you are developing for native mobile application or mobile web application or cross-platform development. So we look into platform proliferation. So platform proliferation is a concept where there are many platform that a mobile device developer have to choose. So unlike the stock computer market, which commonly use Intel x86 based machine, that is uh, Intel processor or AMD processor, mobile device come in many different machine architectures such as ARM, x86, 32-bit or 64-bit. Or some also have um, MIPS a platform. So this led to different operating system and different machine code binary produced for each machine architecture. And then additionally, different manufacturer champion their own operating system and set of life system library for their own mobile devices. So this is unlike um, desktop uh, development. So in desktop development, most of the desktop and server development uh, they will only consist of a single set of uh, machine architecture. There is an x86 machine uh, based on Intel x86 machine. And then there are only two form of uh, prevalent mob, uh, operating system for desktop. That is uh, Apple, okay, Mac OS and Microsoft Windows. And some for server-based operating system, we have Linux, okay, GNU Linux operating system. So some manufacturers supported different OS for their devices. Additionally, for mobile devices, Samsung uses Tden, Bada operating system, and Windows Mobile and Android on their devices. So for Samsung vendor alone, they supported Tden, Bada, Windows Mobile, and Android operating system on their devices and their line of products. Uh, until recently, Windows Mobile is also an option for Samsung devices. But uh, now, Microsoft has already stopped offering Windows Mobile operating system um, uh, to the mobile devices market. Platform proliferation is unavoidable due to the nature of mobile device market and the nature of mobile device architecture. So we have many platform, many operating system in the uh, mobile device. So if you are a developer, you have to choose carefully uh, which type of uh, platform you want your application to be available uh, to because uh, you do not know uh, where your user or what type of devices that the user would prefer to use in order to market your application. So these are the example of platform proliferation. Uh, example of mobile OS platform, we have uh, Android, okay, and then for mobile device alone, you have to choose either you can de uh, develop in iOS, which mainly use uh, Swift and Objective-C uh, programming languages. For Android, you use uh, mainly uh, Java and Kotlin. And then for Windows Mobile, it uses C Sharp and Visual Basic.net. But uh, Windows Mobile platform has been discontinued in January to 2020 so there are no more windows mobile platform and then for bada if you want to develop bada it mainly uses c and then for design it mainly also uses c programming languages but some uh, tzen operating system also supported html5 and then you also have kai os operating system so kai os operating system mainly uses javascript and html5 so here are some of the platform that are available for the mobile devices market. So of course the giant would be Android and iOS. And then there are also other 
uh, operating system available Tizen, Bada, KOS So if you use uh, an uh, application such as uh, Facebook You notice that Facebook is also available in uh, Android And then available in iOS And then it also available for Bada and KOS So this is true for Facebook application And then if you want also to develop your application you must make sure that your application is uh, supported in Android and iOS. But if you neglect to support your uh, application in uh, iOS, then uh, your application is only available on Android. Uh, then only Android uh, devices user can access your application. So uh, this is the dilemma uh, of uh, mobile developer, especially for small uh, mobile application uh, studio. Uh, which uh, they have to divide their resources uh, when they are developing for application because most uh, application developer have to support uh, which uh, may have to choose which platform they wish to support and then they have to ensure where or when uh, the user can access their application through which uh, platform so if you choose only to deploy your application on android so it means that some user may not use your application on iOS and if you choose you to deploy your application in iOS then um, some of the user that uses Android operating system may not be able to use your application on Android but if you want to support both that is good but you have to, uh, to realize that the challenges in supporting both platforms is that you need to have two set of source code and then you have to have uh, support for two development team one development team for android and then another one development team for ios supporting ios so this is an issues in uh, uh, in maintaining the software so the complexity may have uh, to increase because you have to concentrate on two teams one teams uh, to develop uh, for uh, the application for Android platform and another team you have to focus on developing for iOS and then there is also an issues in maintaining compatibility between platform and interoperability because certain platform has restrictions that are not present on another platform uh, for example in iOS there are certain uh, API that are very restricted such as the vibration okay vibration uh, API that are restricted on iOS and then fingerprint okay fingerprint or biometric API is also restricted in iOS it's not as free to use as in uh, Android operating system so if you are developing uh, an application you have to keep this in mind because uh, some of your API that are available on Android may not be available on iOS and may not also be available on Tizen or Bada or Kai OS so the complexity of maintaining the software increases because in iOS, if you uh, if you have already know, you need to use another IDE. So in iOS, you need to use Xcode, and then you have to use uh, Objective C uh, or Swift uh, programming languages. But in Android, you have to use Java and Kotlin. So you need to have a team of programmer that are very familiar with Java and Kotlin to develop in Android and then another team that uses Swift and Objective-C to develop in uh, iOS uh, uh, platform. So just to deploy a single application. So if you look around uh, your Facebook application, Instagram application and other application that are available to both platform, it means that the team have to create a multiple version of the application to be deployed on uh, two separate platform okay this is uh, only when we are talking about android and ios you have two application instead of one you have two actually more than two okay but we will get uh, into that in the next segment that is device fragmentation so just for that you have to develop two application one for android one for ios and then uh, both use two vastly different uh, programming languages, two vastly different API, and so on. So that's why 
this represent a problem. Okay, this is uh, unlike in desktop uh, market because in desktop market the line are much more thicker what we call it okay uh, are much more defined okay between uh, windows uh, users and i and mac os users and also linux users they are separate uh, the line that divide between uh, those uh, desktop users are clearly defined but in uh, mobile devices they are much more like 50 50 be especially between uh, android and ios so next, uh, we look into device fragmentation. So some, so some people uh, would uh, confuse between device fragmentation and platform uh, proliferation. There are certain similarity between device fragmentation and platform proliferation because um, uh, both are the challenges that have to be overcome by mobile device developer. So we look into device fragmentation. Device fragmentation is a situation where devices for a platform has a vastly different specification, features or capabilities. So device fragmentation also refer to device that has different OS and API. So unlike platform proliferation, device fragmentation refer to a situation where device for a single platform have different specification, features and capability. So, when you want to develop your application, you have to choose between Android and iOS. But let's say that you have already chosen your application to be deployed on only Android to avoid additional headaches in developing your first application. Okay, you have already chosen Android. But after you choose Android operating system or Android platform, you will find that you will be facing this device fragmentation problem. So in device fragmentation problem, it means that even if you choose a single platform that is Android, you find that uh, Android have vastly different uh, devices that have different specifications. Some devices might have two cameras. Some devices might have four cameras. Some devices support thumbprint okay for fingerprint uh, for biometric uh, access but some devices do not have fingerprint sensor and then some devices have nfc okay nfc reader some devices have four exist uh, accelerometer but some devices uh, only have three exist from say some devices have gyroscope some devices do not have gyroscope so uh this is a problem which uh we define as device fragmentation so device fragmentation can occur within the same platform and is more common in android and windows mobile operating system but uh, since uh, windows mobile operating system has been discontinued so we are only uh focus more on android and ios so iOS, although it has less problem with uh, device fragmentation, but the problem with, uh, of device fragmentation is still exists within iOS. So let's look into the example of device fragmentation. So this is device fragmentation in a nutshell. So we have two devices okay, from Xiaomi. Okay, we have Mi 10T and Mi 10T Pro. It has the same platform, which is Android. Okay, Android 10. Same vendor, which is Xiaomi. But both these of the device capability varies widely between Mi 10 and Mi 10T. Okay, let's look. What uh, are the differences between Mi 10 and Mi 10T? Okay, Mi 10T Pro and Mi 10T. <laughs> okay. First is that uh, the camera uh, for Mi 10T Pro is 108 megapixel. This is uh, vastly different from Mi 10T which has 64 megapixel camera. And then the camera for Mi 10T uses Samsung HMX Super Sensor. But uh, camera for Mi 10T uh, only without the Pro uses Sony IFX uh, camera okay, uh, sensor. Okay, the aperture is also different 
And then for Mi 10T Pro, it support uh, support up to 30 times digital zoom. So this is the main differences. So this is to illustrate the device fragmentation between Mi 10T Pro and Mi 10. Even it is within the same, uh, it uses the same vendor, the same platform. Is the devices within the same vendor still have widely different uh, device capability, which you have to take account when you are developing a uh, mobile application. And then, additionally, some mobile device vendor add vendor specific extension to the Android operating system for their mobile devices. Okay, this customized extension may change the original behavior of the original Android operating system. We call it AOSP. So I believe most of you haven't used or very rarely used the original Android operating system. If you want to see how the original or Android operating system looks like, you have to buy Pixel. Okay, Pixel uh, mobile devices. Okay, the Pixel mobile devices is the only official uh, Google certified uh, vanilla uh, Android operating system uh, from Google. So it has Pixel. Okay, Pixel phone. Okay, the rest uh, mobile devices that came with Android operating system has been customized with a vendor specific extension which changes the behavior of the Android operating system widely. Okay, for Huawei, their Android operating system is called EMUI. Okay, for Amazon, they call it Fire OS. Okay, the customization is called an, uh, Fire OS. For Xiaomi, they call it MIUI. For OnePlus, their operating system is called Oxygen OS. And then for Oppo, it's, it's called Color OS. And then for Samsung, it has One UI. Okay, the operating system is called One UI. Okay, and then for Vivo, we have Origin OS. The operating system is uh, name is Origin OS. Okay, it, it is still Android operating system, but it has been significantly changed, and then uh, it has been added with a vendor specific extension which render the operating system behavior uh, different from the original Android operating system as published by the Android open source project. Okay, this is the logo for the Android uh, operating system as published by uh, various vendor. Okay, this uh, represents significant uh, device fragmentation because different uh, OS have different API. Okay, some have uh, its own extension added on top of the original Android operating system. So you may have to pay attention on how your application would look like under or behave under certain operating system. So you, if you want to develop uh, the application, you have to ensure that this application can work uh, uniformly or being displayed correctly on these various operating system. Okay, Oxygen OS, Vivo Origin OS, EMUI, One UI, MIUI, and Color OS. Okay, this is just some of the example, but uh, there are other vendor that produce their own uh, vendor specific extension or customization in the original Android OS. So the closest thing uh, where you can see the original Android OS is when you run the emulator in the uh, Android um, Studio. So when you run the emulator in the Android Studio, the operating system that's shown in the Android Studio is the one that run the original AOSP Android Open Source Project operating system without any vendor specific extension or customization. So this is another example of device fragmentation. Okay. Example one, uh, this is a fairly detailed example. Okay, let's say that uh, Samsung Galaxy 5 and Samsung Galaxy Note 2 are both Android uh, smartphones produced by Samsung. 
So Samsung Galaxy Note 2 has 5.3 inch uh, screen size, has a front and back camera, and support NFC. So NFC is a near field communication uh, sensor which can be used to read smart card or NFC based uh, reader. So Samsung Galaxy 5 additionally have 2.8 uh, screen size and has only a back camera without a front selfie camera. So an application developer who releases a self-portrait camera application must not assume all phones have a front and back camera because doing so may crash the application on devices like Samsung Galaxy 5. So and NFC and additionally and NFC or uh, uh, RFID application will crash on Samsung Galaxy 5 because it will try to access a non-existent NFC sensor. So what uh, we can learn from this example is that if you are uh, developing an application, you must not assume that all devices are similar to your own devices. Okay, that is the uh, first assumption that you must make. Okay. You must assume that every device is different from your devices. Do not assume that everybody use uh, your type of application. So, dan case ni kita jangan seronok sendiri lah masa develop application kita. Rasa macam application tu boleh run uh, dalam uh, phone kita. Tapi sebenarnya dia tak boleh run dalam phone orang lain. So, this is the first thing that you must assume. Okay, you must assume that... Uh, not all uh, application have the same. Uh, sorry, you must. Ass okay, the thing is that you must assume that not all devices will support your application or have the same capability as your own devices. So that's why when you are developing an application, you have to put some safety measure. You must test whether the application have. Uh, uh, whether the devices have the required sensor before you try to access the sensor. So you must program certain sort of testing inside the application to test whether the sensor would exist or not. After you perform the test in the application, only then the application can ask the permission to use the required sensor or API. So uh, what I meant by testing is that it's not your you are testing on the device, okay? Or not only you are testing on the different device, but also you must also, uh, program your application to perform self-test uh, when it is running, already running in the device. We call it runtime testing. So, you must perform a check, okay? They can check camera exists or not. Uh, if camera exists, use camera. So, and then it will check uh, how many devices, uh, how many camera does these devices have, front or back? And even if you have a back camera, which of the camera that you must select to get uh, the uh, best uh, angle. So nowadays, most of the phone have more than one camera, back camera. So it have front and back, but in the back camera, it has more than one camera. So in order to make sure that you selected the, uh, the most appropriate camera, your application must perform check, uh, okay, to select uh, which of the camera. And if your application is lazy enough, uh, you can uh, instruct your application to select the default camera in the application. And even then, because of the device fragmentation, certain uh, OS implement the default camera selection differently from the Android operating system. It means that Kadang-kadang bila kita select kamera satu, dalam phone Vivo, kamera satu je kamera depan. Okay, kamera selfie. But for other devices, if you select the default camera of kamera satu, okay, uh, one, uh, camera number one, it will select the back camera. <laughs> so, you have to be careful uh, with that type of uh, programming uh, uh, parlance, okay, for, for programming algorithm. So, that's why you have to test your application on various operating system and various devices before you deploy it uh, to the mass market. Okay, this is example number two in device fragmentation. 
So Ahmad and Abu both use Samsung Galaxy 2 phone initially with the device that sold with Android 2.3.7 operating system. However, Ahmad decided to upgrade the device OS to Android 4.04. .04. So upgrade the device OS ni tak sama macam upgrade application, right? You have to upgrade the device's firmware. Okay, the firmware and then the device need to be rebooted and so on and then it upgrade the OS. So one day, Ahmad decide to use a, a download uh, application which uses Wi-Fi peer-to-peer -peer features which is available in Android 4.04 .04 because uh, Android 4.04 .04 support Wi-Fi peer-to-peer. Okay, Abu saw what Ahmad did and tried to load the same peer-to-peer uh, -peer application in his own phone. However, the application does not work on Abu phone, leading him to speculate that his device might be broken. Actually, his device is not broken. It is just only using the operating system, which does not support Wi-Fi P2P API. Okay, this is also another problem with device fragmentation. Okay, same vendor, same model, but different operating system. Okay, because one uh, decided to upgrade, another one, probably the upgrade uh, process has uh, trouble. Okay, has trouble uh, uh, upgrading or one person decided not to upgrade the operating system. Okay, here are the sources for problem for developer in device fragmentation. Okay, between September 2011 and April 2016, there are vast number of device profile being created in Google Play. So in September uh, 2011, the Google Play Store only have 15,000 device profile. Okay, about 15,000 device profile. It means that it has 15,000 uh, devices model and devices variation. Okay, ada 15,000 device yang berlainan okay, dalam Google Play Store. But since then, in April 2016, the Google Play Store have 45,000 device profiles. So, what about now? Okay, five years uh, after that, in 2020. So, in 2020, actually, we have more than 120,000 device profile in the Google Play Store. 120,000 different devices uh, and variation of devices. And this means a huge problem for the developer when the developer decided to release an application because they have to dif uh, test different devices uh, for their application to ensure that they, they, their application can be executed on different mobile application without any problem. So, yang ni dia tunjuk lah macam-macam cara untuk test application. So this is a very uh, this is a real developer uh, testing desktop where one developer has to test multiple devices before that uh, application are uh, being uh, uploaded to the Google Play Store. Okay, before the application are being deployed to the Google Play Store to the mass market. Because if uh, the application keep crashing on a single or two devices. The application may receive bad rating from the users. The users may become frustrated and then they might uh, complain. And then, it, uh, and then another worst case scenario is that the user may stop using the application altogether. So this is what happens when you want to deploy mobile application on uh, mobile devices. You have to test in uh, a lot of devices. Not only you only have to test on your mobile devices with, with variable screen sizes, you must also test on the tablet. Okay, sometimes certain application looks uh, okay on small devices, on uh, mobile uh, devices such as mobile uh, phone. But it may display weirdly on tablet or iPad. Okay, on tablet or iPad size devices. Okay, it might not be usable on iPad-sized uh, devices. So, 
This is why uh, testing mobile application is very tedious uh, process. And then uh, in most popular applications such as Facebook and Instagram, they have a whole department for testing the application on hundreds and thousands of devices. So in case of uh, Facebook, so more than 1,000 developer and tester are involved uh, just for testing the Facebook application alone. Okay, not only does they have dedicated department for testing the Facebook application on thousands of devices or hundreds of devices, and even then they have automation in process, but there are more than thousand uh, developer involved in developing Facebook application. So, benda ni dia bukan sedikit developer dia. It uses a lot of developers uh, to develop a good uh, mobile application. So, even you see that the mobile application seems like simple and easy. But actually, it's the most uh, tricky and complicated and most intriguing platform for you to develop. Okay, this is com when compared to desktop, desktop is far more easy to develop on. So, if you need further reading on device fragmentation, you can read uh, on this link, right? Okay, it's like taming the bull. Okay, device fragmentation, how to tame the bull. It's very uh, uh, tricky subject. <laughs> okay, it has been uh, published on multiple papers on problem of device fragmentation. It's even huge problem than uh, platform proliferation. Okay, next we look into the exercise. So, please define platform proliferation in mobile device. Describe the problem posed by platform proliferation in mobile device. And then describe the mobile device fragmentation. And then please differentiate between device fragmentation and platform proliferation. Okay, these two things look similar but it's actually not the same. Okay, those two, those two things are challenges to the mobile developers but they are actually two different set of problem and then give two example of device fragmentation apa problem dia device fragmentation so you have already seen that device fragmentation only exists within the same platform and within um, the same operating system by having a vendor that may release a uh, different specification for a wide array of its own devices. Alright, uh, this is the concept that you have to learn before you decide to develop a mobile native application. Alright, this is a crucial concept that you need to grasp and you need to learn before you decide to develop a mobile native application and deploy it to the platform of your own choosing. So be seeing you back in the next class.